Amongst the maze of passages aboard Titanic, one stood out as being instrumental for crewmen that were navigating the ship. The passage was nicknamed Scotland Road by Titanic's crew, but officially it was known as the Working Passage. For such an important passage, there's a surprising lack of references pertaining to it. The passage was never photographed, and it was never written about in great detail. The main purpose of this type of passage is to provide ease of access for a ship's crew, typically stretching from one end of a ship to the other. But the passage really had several functions. Along the port side, doors along the passage provided access to facilities for the ship's stewards, waiters, and cooks. Along the starboard side were several emergency access points. Through these doors, the ship's firemen would come up from the boiler rooms in the case of an emergency. These doors took engineers to and from the engine rooms, with the engineer's mess being located just here. These doors provided access to three key stairwells, two of which led straight to the boat deck. At the center, on the port side, was the entrance to the third-class dining saloon. The aft end of the passage converged into a third-class corridor, which led to the third-class stairs. The forward end of the passage converged into an open space surrounding the number three hatch. Separating the passage were three watertight bulkheads at the aft end. In the case of flooding, these watertight doors would have to be shut manually from the deck above. On older vessels, the working passage equivalent would be the lowermost promenade. This promenade would typically provide crew and steerage with direct access to and from the forecastle and the poop deck. However, as ships got larger, this design became less practical. Around the time of Olympic and Titanic, the concept of the working passage was becoming more popular and would soon become the standard. However, the passage introduced something of a problem in Titanic's case. If you'll recall, the passage provided direct access to all of the ship's boiler rooms and key stairwells, with no watertight divisions up until the engine room casing. Thus, during the flooding, the working passage allowed water to flow directly above several of the watertight divisions and into the remaining boiler rooms, as well as the first-class stairway. After Titanic sinking, several of the watertight divisions aboard Olympic and Britannic were made several decks taller. This provided the working passages with two extra watertight doors at the forward end. As mentioned previously, it's been difficult to tell exactly what this passage looked like due to a lack of references. For example, here's three different depictions of the passage. These all vary quite a bit, and none of them are quite right. However, several key pieces of evidence have emerged in recent years. One is a specification guide written for the Britannic in 1914, which includes information about her working passage. The other is a photograph of the working passage aboard the RMS Belgenland, which was another Harlan and Wolf built White Star liner. Combine those with Olympic's iron and system plans, and it paints a pretty clear picture. The working passage consisted of deck flooring with waterways running along the bulkheads. The bulkheads along the passage were mostly steel. The upper half of the bulkheads were painted white, while the bottom half were what Harlan and Wolf called dark mast. There were several fire hydrants along the passage which connected to a fire main that went along the ceiling. The ceiling to the passage was littered with pipes that provided fresh water to several of the ship's facilities. The passage was lit by caged lights that went along the inboard bulkheads. Handrails ran along the outboard bulkheads. Along the bulkhead to the engineer's mess were three sets of pivoted wood shutters to help air out the room, 